Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Uh, in my curacy parish there was a 102 year old lady who was still driving. She could just about remember when Queen Victoria's funeral train passed through her Norfolk village. She was very generous, often supplying our children with chocolate. On one delivery she was clearly rather sad. A gentle inquiry revealed that she'd stopped making such gifts to her own great-grandchildren because they were never um, acknowledged. Uh, at that moment I was grateful for the Boxing Day fight with our kids over thank you letters. If only she had known. For most of our parishes now is the season of Harvest Thanksgiving. It's that season of the year where we consciously stop and give thanks for God's gracious provision for us. Thanksgiving is fundamental to our prayer, indeed to our whole Christian life. So much flows from it. God's charge to the Israelites when they settled in the Promised Land is often read from Deuteronomy at harvest festivals. The passage lists all the features of the land they're about to occupy and finishes with the command, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. If such thanksgiving was fundamental to their identity, Paul identifies the lack of it as a key feature of human sinfulness. In Romans 1.21 he says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Thanksgiving is so vital to our prayer because it rightly orientates us towards spiritual reality. In our current culture of entitlement, where we're encouraged to demand things and get cross if we don't get them, Thanksgiving allows us to receive things as gift and recognize the world revolves around him, not us. Thanksgiving also fosters a spirit of humility. Again, our culture revels in self-aggrandizement. I well remember those Christmas letters from friends lauding the wonderful achievements of their children. Now, being proud of one's kids is good for their self-esteem, I've no doubt. But so much of what we have and achieve is the result of things over which we have no control. We cannot control our genetic endowment or choose our family background or engineer many of the circumstances of our lives. Were we to have been handed the deck of those who are, we're quick to judge, we might have turned out just the same way and vice versa. This was rather humorously and a bit rudely uh, played out in the film Changing Places a few years ago. A homeless street hustler and successful stockbroker found their stations in life swapped over as a result of a social experiment to seal a bet. It concluded that nurture and circumstance beat nature every time. The New Testament is full of a wide-eyed wonderment at the Lord's gracious provision for us in Jesus Christ. How could it be, muses Paul, that a broken wretched man like myself could be in receipt of the extravagant forgiving goodness of God? In our worship I wonder whether we have become so familiar with the gift of that that the joy and gratitude is strangely muted. Surely the fact that the creator of the universe makes provision for the impossible gulf between God and his creatures to be bridged and invites us to participate in the very life of God himself, a, a life that begins now and goes on forever beyond physical death, should induce a response of gratitude at the very least. There are of course times in our lives when Paul's exhortation in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18 to give thanks in all circumstances can appear cruel and insensitive in the face of terminal illness or financial ruin or broken relationships. Surely not. But be clear, he says, give thanks in all circumstances, not for all circumstances. 
In some way, God remains at work shaping and forming us to enjoy eternity even when our presenting circumstances appear desperate. In such times, thanksgiving will be an act of the will, a reflection on little things, a determination to find redeeming features, even in the most disappointing experience. We may find that such action can reframe the experience in its entirety. A psychologist and spiritual director, Larry Crabb, said, we are always in danger of living for good things, of thinking that blessings from God satisfy our souls more deeply than God himself. Thanksgiving ultimately reframes our attitude to life and opens us to such experiences, both in the now and more fully in the yet to come. And now I best get off to morning prayer.